Hello, welcome back to the Grindhouse Gutter. I'm Josh, and I'm joined here with Donnie. Yo. Tiana. Hi. And Professor Smoke. What's up? We are from the All-American Spook Show podcast, which you can catch every Monday at 6 p.m. East, wherever you get your podcast, or right here on the YouTube channel. We also encourage you to go check out other series here on the channel, Hammer Horror and Order and Video Vortex. They come out every month, so you don't want to miss a thing. But here on uh, Grindhouse Gutter, we let the Professor Smoke every month choose something that would have played in the old grindhouses, you know, B-movies of the uh, drive-in days, stuff like that. So, Smoke, what did you bring for us this month? Oh, uh, yeah, we got we did a uh, Rolling Thunder from 1977. John Flynn directed it, written by Paul Schrader, who uh, wrote one of my favorite personal favorite movies of all time, Taxi Driver, and uh, which was one year before this. 1976 Taxi Driver came out. I, I'd never seen it, and actually, like, I feel that the title is, is misleading. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I was expecting at all with this movie. Yeah, same. I, I hadn't seen it before. I hear. Rolling Thunder, and I and I see 1977. I'm thinking like maybe a Mad Max type of uh, road race type of thing, or like a truck, a trucking movie, or motorcycle gangs, or something like that. But no, it's it's completely uh, completely different from what I assumed. <laughs> well, there was a one that uh, uh, now the title's probably going to slip my mind. Maybe it was Rolling Vengeance. Maybe that was like a monster truck. Type movie, you know, monster truck, grindhouse, revenge movie, or whatever. And maybe that's what I had in my head, but yeah, yeah my, I think that was, and, and that's going in completely blind too. I try not to, you know, if if especially if it's something I've never seen, I try not to look anything up or watch any trailers or anything. So I, you know, I don't really know what to expect. But yeah, that one caught me unaware. Yeah, yeah, because basically what you get is a uh, sort of a, well, a revenge thriller in the in the league of like Death Wish, Dirty Harry type revenge except for you know he's, he's not a cop he's a vietnam vet returning home to his you know, small town and we'll get into but you know the things that happened to him leading up to him taking revenge on this group of people at home invasion type thing and whatnot so uh so it's very much i guess you could say it's i mean paul schrader wrote it so it's got a little bit more to it maybe than your typical death wish knockoff or something like that you know and, and i certainly wasn't expecting it to be like a um i, I could understand the revenge part of it because you know that that was kind of the theme of a lot of those movies back in those days, you know, like yeah. the gritty kind of revenge flicks were really, you know, popular at the time, but I, I didn't expect the deep dive into like the PTSD trauma of yeah, yeah. Vietnam and, you know, the war vets coming back and everything like that. Yeah. Plus, plus the fact that, I mean, in most of these types of movies that whether it be a Vietnam vet or whether it be an ex cop or whatever the case when something happens, you have the home invasion, the robbery, and then something happens to a family member, whether they're, whether it's a wife or a daughter, what somebody gets raped, possibly killed. But usually it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a familial thing. And there's like the husband and wife who loved each other, whatever this, this case is kind of like, our, I guess, you know, Paul Schrader writing into some of the reality of the situations, returning vets whose wives, and, you know, plus this one, he was in a POW camp. So his wife probably thought that he had already, he was done. He's probably dead. So she had kind of moved on in her mind. She'd found somebody else or whatever and, you know, fell fallen in love with somebody else. So he turns back up, not dead, but, you know, being rescued out of the POW camp, coming back home. And she tells him flat out that I, I fall in love with somebody else because, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, it's got that drama aspect of it. Like, damn, that's that's pretty cold and hardcore. And I'm sure, you know, it was a re reality of the situations sometimes. Uh, but it definitely injected more... <laughs> a little dark or darker aspect to it. So whenever the, the home invasion happens and it's, you know, that's his wife and his son and his son, I, I can't, his son hadn't, did his son had, he hadn't met him yet. Right. Or really knew him because he was a baby maybe or whatever. I forget yeah. what. He'd been he gone for so long. Yeah. He didn't really have any memory of him because he was a baby when he left and he'd been gone for what, seven years, whatever the yeah. time frame yeah. was. So he didn't really know it was, he didn't know. So him. that probably had an area of darkness that you, <laughs> They just made it that much worse almost uh, for him, you know. The cold way that, uh, what was the star's name? William Devane? Wasn't that his name? Yeah. And William Devane. Yeah, William Devane. That he that he uh, played this character where, like, you know, he's he shows no emotion. But it, it makes sense that you know, the way he acts, because he has been a prisoner of war for, you know, six or seven years or whatever, that, like, you can't get to him. You know, like, he's... <laughs> He's already been through hell, so like, there's not much you can do, and, and he doesn't really react. 
Yeah. Really to anything that happens to him, you know? I mean, he does eventually, like, to get revenge, but, I mean, like, yeah. he's not emotional like a normal person would be in this situation. Yeah, I guess, yeah, they don't they don't give you that easy way out, I guess, of, like, like I was saying before, where, you know, put aside the whole Vietnam vet thing and then the POW camp and then coming home and his wife fall in love with somebody else, but your standard sort of revenge thriller type thing is, like I said, husband and wife or girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever family they get killed or something terrible happens to them and he exacts revenge but in a passionate kind of way you know like so and they give so they give you that out they give you that yeah he's he's getting you know he's getting his you know because these people messed him over and all that so you know he's kind of like robbing you of that i guess because <laughs> they you know he inserts that reality of pow thing and the ptsd and the again the, the wife who's fallen in love with somebody else yeah. and i think you've got a lot of great casting in this one too because not only you've got william devane as uh Major Rain, right? The main character, which mm-hmm. Tommy Lee Jones, he, he, yeah. obviously much younger Tommy Lee Jones, playing like his, uh, I guess he was like his uh, a soldier under him, right? Or he had been in the, he had been a POW with him, right? Yeah. And you've got uh, James Best, you know, who most people would probably better know as Roscoe Coltrane from uh, <laughs> Dukes of Hazard, but he's the yeah. he's the main bad guy basically in this movie. Uh, you and that would have been one year before was Duke's Hazard nineteen seventy seven or seventy eight when I think it was seventy eight right I think when it was seventy seven oh, was it seventy seven yeah probably would have been around seventy seven but roughly around time. the same time yeah yeah <laughs> but you've al- you've also got a small role from Dabney Coleman as the uh, psychiatrist or whatever right yeah, oh, yeah. that's true <laughs> and you've got Linda Haynes as uh you know the girl that um you know falls in love with him or whatever but yeah, yeah. the great cast for sure yeah um there was also uh where um chris christopherson was uh originally supposed to be uh, uh major rain but he dropped out and then it went to uh william devane um <laughs> there was also david carradine and joe don baker was also kind of <laughs> joe don baker can you imagine oh as, my. Um, major rain you no know, i can i can imagine it but <laughs> so much worse than what we got <laughs> Yeah. That, that would quickly shift this, I believe, from uh, Grindhouse Gutter over to Crapster Peace Theater, our Patreon. <laughs> Real quick, I think, of Joe Don Baker. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's This is also like more serious and dramatic than our usual fare here on Grindhouse Gutter, right? Usually, like a lot of the things that we watch aren't quite this serious. Yeah, I know. It, it definitely is um, a mainstream. It's one of those crossover movies. I'm sure, you know, it did play in regular theaters. I mean, like I said, Tommy Lee Jones, William Devane, written by Paul Schrader. I mean, it, it had big names attached to it and did play in regular theaters, but it also was one of those that crossed over and played Grindhouse. And you can see that mm-hmm. aspect of it because it's got a little bit, even though it's not full on revenge thrill, like we said, there's more deeper levels to it, but it still does have that slightly exploitational element of things. Like, I mean, he's got a hook because they, you know, they grinded his hand down in the damn, uh, garbage disposal in the sink <laughs> and so now his hand is replaced with this hook that he uses for various things shows him kind of trying to you know get used to using it at first and then later on he's using it as a weapon <laughs> so i mean you know you got you definitely have the grindhouse elements it's just not it's not uh i spill in your grave level <laughs> right right bridge throw you know no if anything they kind of slow it down if you think back on like there, there's the thing happens to his family and then he's in the hospital for what, like six, seven weeks. It's some long amount of time he's got to recover. And then as soon as he gets out, he immediately, like they show him like doing some metal work and like sharpening his, uh, you know, his hook hand and everything like that. So you're like, Oh man, the revenge is about to be swift. And then <laughs> they, they really slow it down for a while after that, before he finally, you know, starts getting, yeah. he starts getting the pieces together to find out who they are, where they are and all that stuff. He he's he's calculated, but he's also like kind of half crazy too, because it's like some of the actions that he's taking here don't make sense. Yeah, and you think that's probably that PTSD aspect and trauma from the war, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's he's clearly not clicking on all cylinders, you know, even on his quest to get revenge. It's like dragging, yeah. like bringing the girl Linda along with him. Like, there's really no need for any of that, right? Yeah. And like, cause I mean, she, she fallen in love with him, obviously, clearly. And then he is not telling her at first what he's doing, but then he's, yeah, he's dragging her along. And then she finds out later and like, she's like, oh, great. I'm just, you know, 
I have this problem of falling in love with men who you know do this type do something to yeah. me or, or whatever. So. And then in the end, like she didn't really serve much of a purpose other than just to give him a, a love interest for a little while because yeah. <laughs> You know, and I don't know. I didn't look deeper deeper into that to see if it's out there anywhere. And I don't know if it was, it was written that way just to alleviate some of the dark, or, you know. Because I mean, otherwise, like I said, it goes straight into oh man, my wife's not loving me anymore. She loves somebody else, and then the home invasion, and then wife and kid dead, and then you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just goes darker and darker and darker. So I, I think that I would assume that they she was probably written into it as a little bit of a lift from some of that going completely down that darker path. For the yeah. whole movie, the movie, you know. And Tommy Lee Jones at this age, man, he just looks crazy, right? Like the, the expressionless, <laughs> like you're just waiting for that dude to snap. You could tell it from like the moment you see him at the beginning of the movie, you know, until some stuff happens towards the end. Like you're just waiting, like, oh man, this dude, when he loses it, he's gonna lose it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I think it's another great choice though, Smoke. Here for Grindhouse Gutter, we have two different ratings here. The first one is you give your grindhouse gutter or your uh, gutter rating, right? That's zero through 10 of kind of where it lands on the grindhouse scale. So how grindhousey is it? And then we uh, we don't do a star rating here. We do uh, a rating dependent on what type of movie it is. So this being mostly an action flick, you're going to give out choppas, and that's your traditional zero through five. So uh, as far as your grindhouse gutter rating, what do you say there? It definitely has that crossover appeal, mainstream and it played in the grindhouses. Therefore, you know, it's not a full-on grindhouse movie, so it's not going to get, you know, definitely going to be not on the side of the 10. But it does have that revenge element. It has vi the violence in the, in the uh, like I said, he's got that hook hand, and he does use it in at least a couple scenes. We'll go with the six on the grindhouse elements, I think. I think it's up there. It's above mid, I mean, obviously, because it, it hit the grindhouses, but you can definitely tell that it's a, it's got that mainstream crossover appeal, too. For the time, for the seventies, you know. What about your? How many want choppas? Do you want to hand out to it? I really, I really enjoy this one. It's a, it's it's different. It's a, it's if you were to compare it to anything, I guess you could compare it to like I said, Death Wish in a way, because again, Death Wish is also a movie that had that more you know mainstream appeal and had the gr crossover Grindhouse and also influenced a lot of later Grindhouse movies. So um, I'd probably give this one a four, four choppas. Yeah, I think it's fair. Donnie, did you want to say anything about it before we uh, check out on it? I did like it. Uh, um, you know, I guess if if I was uh, kind of surprised by anything, I, I I would say probably the pacing. You know, the the, the first uh, the first you know several minutes are uh, pretty violent, and uh, you know, there's there's like over an hour where there's like very minimal. It's just dialogue. That's what, that's what I meant by like they slow it down. Yeah, they get yeah, you here like, and then yeah. they slow it down. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino is a big fan of this one too. In fact, named his uh, distribution company Rolling Thunder Pictures mm. after this movie. Well, there you go. Yeah, this feels like a movie that probably should have been up for some awards or something. And I and I didn't see where it really got nominated for anything or something, but like it kind of has that feel to it, you know. But maybe that's just us looking at it now. Maybe it probably wasn't as appreciated back then. Who knows? But and now you back and say, oh yeah, you know. William Devane, Tommy Lee Jones, you know, all these names that maybe weren't quite as big in 19. Yeah. Well, it's another good selection. So what are you going to bring us for the uh, gutter next time, next month? Oh, this will be an interesting one. It'll be, we're going to go back to uh, some good old chop sake kung fu. Uh, Shaw Brothers. And it's, this movie's under various titles. I, in fact, I have two different VHS tapes under two titles, two different titles. One, it's... One of the more famous titles for it is Chinese Super Ninjas or Chinese Super Ninja. Sometimes it's plural, sometimes it's not. This particular tape is China is a uh, singular, right? Yeah, Chinese Super Ninja. And then also have it under uh, just Super Ninjas. All right. <laughs> and then probably though the more famous title is uh, Five Element Ninja or Five Element Ninjas. So uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be up next and. Been a little while since we uh, had a kung fu flick on. I forget what the last kung fu one. It might have been was it flying guillotine? Maybe I forget now exactly. Master of the flying. Maybe. I think it was uh five, oh five deadly venoms. Well, looking forward to it. So uh, for Will, who couldn't be with us, Donnie, Professor Smoke, Tiana, I'm Josh. We're from the All American Spook Show. Like I said off the top, check out the podcast. Comes out every Monday, six p.m. East, wherever you get them. And stay uh, tuned here to the channel for uh, all the other cool stuff we got going on. So we'll talk to you next month.